Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today I want to talk about something that's pretty simple but a lot of people don't know how to do, and that is having an object with a particle system where the color of the particles is inherited from where it comes on the surface. So, if I play this, you can see that I have a plane that has some red, some blue, some other blue, some yellow, and if a particle comes from this corner, like this particle is emitted from this corner, this is where it spawns from, it's yellowed, inherits that color. And then same for the blues over here and the reds over there, etc. And the technique I'm going to show you to do this works with, you know, textures that you can paint yourself like I did here. Or you can use videos or images or image sequences or whatever. And of course it works in a 3D, although if I extrude this, it's not, you know, it's, it looks a bit strange. But you can still see it, particles are being emitted from now this 3D thing, and it's still inheriting the color. And most of them in this area are blue, light blue, like we'd expect. So let's talk about how to do this. So I'm going to start off with a new Blender scene. Yours should look something like this. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do the plane thing again, because I think it's easier to see what's going on. So add in a plane. Then go to the shading workspace, and this is where we're going to add in an image, and then later we'll talk about how to paint your own texture and everything. But once you have your plane, create a new material, and instead of this BSDF, I'm going to add in an image texture, which we can, you know, connect to the surface. So this is what's going to be on the surface of our plane. And then you can, again, use any image, any video, whatever. So I'm going to be using this one which means that all the particles spawning from here and here are going to be black, and then the rest of them are going to be kind of tan. And if it just so happens to come from the eye, it's going to be yellow. This is kind of a scary picture, but uh, whatever. Um, okay, so once we have this, we need to set up our particle system. And this can be whatever you want. We're just going to do something simple, like uh, select your plane, go to the particles, particle tab, create a new particle system, and already... We have a very simple particle system. This is just the one I used, but you can add, you know, more to it. So you can add like a force and, uh, I don't know, make it turbulence maybe. And we can increase the strength of that turbulence, something like 100. And now you can see it's going crazy. Maybe let's do something a bit weaker so we can follow where it spawns from on the plane. Okay, so now we have a weak turbulence particle system. And what we're going to do is right now these particles are being shown, these spheres, they're being shown as halos, right? If we select our plane and go to render, you can see it's set to halo, which just means make a sphere wherever there's a particle. But we actually want it to have an object, a object that we make for each of these particles. So I'm going to shift A, mesh, and it can be a cube, it can be a sphere, whatever. But basically right now we're just creating a particle object. So once you have your particle object, uh, in the render settings, we're going to choose render as and then do, and then do object. Stuttering is uh, hard today. So now it's going to spawn in objects for our particles. And for our instance, this is what's being instanced on the particles. We're going to choose that very same cube. You can either do it like that or use the eyedropper and select it. And you can see that now we have cubes being emitted. And just to really hammer the point home, if we like... I don't know, add a loop cut and bring this down. You can see now all our particles look like that. So what I'm trying to say is this is our particle, which means that if we want this to inherit the color of our plane, we're going to need to create a material for this as well. So with your particle selected, whatever it may be, create a new material. And right now, if we take this uh, principled BSDF and change the color, you see we're changing our particle color, and therefore each of these particle instances is also going to have that same color. So what we're going to do instead of this is we're going to add in an image texture and connect this and make sure you're using the very same image that you're using here. So I'm going to be using this one. And you can see that you can kind of tell there's the eye. It has the same image, but these particles kind of have the thing wrapped around the cube instead of having a single color. And this is where the trick comes in. So first of all, I'm going to go into rendered mode. Uh, just so we can see what's going on. And then for the texture coordinates, add in a texture coordinate node, connect this generated um, to the vector input. So right now we haven't really changed much. We just have generated coordinates uh, being used to wrap this image on the sphere, which kind of looks a bit trippy. But uh, how do we make this look like it's a single color dependent on where it's coming from? What you have to do is with this setup, you have to enable from instancer. This is the trick. You hit this button, and then it's going to use generated coordinates, but from the instancing object being this plane. The instancer is what is spawning particles, and the instances are the particles. But you see this doesn't actually fix anything. 
and this is where a lot of people probably get confused, this from instancer option, at least for now, is a cycles only feature. So if you go to the render tab and change over to cycles, you can see that now we get something that works a bit better. And of course, you know, it's not as fast as Eevee, but you can choose GPU and it still works and it's going to be faster. Okay, so now let's actually verify that it's working. So let's uh, go a couple frames in and spawn some particles. You can see that the particles that are spawned over here, like this region over here, are all black like we'd expect. The particles towards the middle are kind of brown and tan. And let's wait for something to come from the eye, which should be bright yellow. It might take a while since it's a very small area. So what we can do is we can select this, this uh, plane and then in the particles, we can actually just increase the number of particles and everything still works, right? We just have a material. So it's going to work no matter how we change our particle system. And you can see it's almost as if if we look from the bottom, you can almost see the image that it came from, especially towards the beginning until the turbulence takes over. And that's, that's a very important point. And the point I'm trying to say is once it inherits a color, it retains that color. So if we do something like add in another force, let's do something like a vortex and put it over here. So they're attracted over there. Let's see if that's strong enough. You see they're kind of being pulled. We can make that even a bit stronger, like five. Maybe that's a bit too strong, but whatever. Either way, once it generates or it spawns and takes its color, it actually retains that no matter where we move it. And this is important for the effect I want to do in the next tutorial. This is just kind of like a precursor. So again, what did we do? We took a object with some texture. This could be a video as well. With our particle, we used the same texture with generated coordinates and made sure to use from instance or with cycles enabled. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be an image texture, right? I mean, it can, it can still be an image texture, but it can be something that we make ourselves. It doesn't have to be something we downloaded. And that's like the demo I showed in the beginning. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to get rid of this texture, which means it's still going to be on the particles, just not on the surface of our uh, instancer. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new texture called this custom text for custom texture. And then again, we want our particle to be using the same thing. Otherwise, it's going to be spawning from the image of the dude looking angry. Okay, cool. So right now, everything's going to be black because no matter where you sample from, it's all black. So that's what happens. So what we're going to do is now that we have our texture, we are going to go to texture paint with our instancer selected, which is going to put us in paint mode, which we can, you know, use to paint and everything. And notice that when we start painting, it also paints on our cube because, again, it's using the same texture. But here it's generated coordinates, and we, we don't care about that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select a color. So something like red, paint a good portion like that over here, then a bit of blue, a bit of purplish, a bit of yellow. Cool. We created a texture. And once you're happy with that, I'll go back to layout, go to rendered mode, which, again, should be in cycles for this to work. And now you can see... Let me actually get rid of this vortex. It's making things a bit hard to see. Hmm. I guess uh, it needed a second to update or it's uh, using a cache. You see how it's still like acting like there's a vortex there. Uh, to fix that, you go to particles, cache, and we can uh, delete all bakes. Does that work? No. This shows how little I know about particle systems. I do know about materials. So there you go. So now we fixed it. And you can see that these particles over here are red. Uh, the particles over here are yellow. There's some that have a bit of a mixture, like these orange ones is where red and yellow meet, and the two colors are kind of overlapping, creating an orange, and etc. Cool. And the nice thing about this setup is whenever you want, it's a very quick uh, updating process. So if we want a different image, I'm just going to choose, I don't know, this hardwood floor, and then go over to our uh, particle and update that to the same texture. And now we are spawning from a wooden thing. And the last thing I want to talk about, since I feel like you probably get the point at this uh, point, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is we know how to spawn these, but how do we get the nice shading, right? We're just kind of pumping an image directly into the surface. It doesn't have any shadows, doesn't have any light interaction. Well, to do that, it's very simple. So starting off with the plane, so assuming we want shadows on our plane, we're just going to add in any kind of BSDF. It can be a principled BSDF, a diffuse BSDF, whatever. Just add it in between. And you can see that now our plane has shadows being cast from the particles. Fine. What about the particles? Well, you just select your particle 
And even though it's using it from instance or in all this, it will still work when you use principled BSDF or any other kind of BSDF. And now you can see these particles also have shading as well. So if we take our light and move it around, you can see it's actually affecting our particle system, which is pretty cool. And in the future, we're going to be doing something with this, but with emissive uh, materials, I think. So yeah, there you go. You now know how to spawn in uh, particles inheriting the surface texture, uh, whatever that may be. And again, you can just make this 3D. So in this case, it's just going to kind of look brown all over. And again, since the particles are baked in, you're going to need to clear the cache. We're going to need to delete bake, bake again, wait for that to finish. And now they're spawning everywhere, inheriting the color. And one, one final time, I'll just say this one more time. You can always change, always change at any point. Here, the CG Geek logo is what we'll be using. And um, maybe that's not what we want to use. It's mostly white. Let's use, and he didn't pay for advertising. Let's use this dog photo, which, which has a lot of colors, which will make it look interesting. And then update the particle as well. And now we have a very multicolored spawning situation. So there you go. Hopefully you understood it. I tried to explain it the best I can. And if you want to support these tutorials and keep me making tutorials for free in a very sustainable way, please do check out my Patreon. Every donation helps. And I say donation because it's kind of a donation, but you also get some access to some Patreon exclusive tutorials, Discord access, some uh, early access to some stuff. So if that's something you're interested in and want to help me out, Patreon is the best way to do that. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial. And yeah, that's everything I have for you guys.